Okay, we're here. As promised, Cameroon National Day. Not without controversy. Hashtag, bring back our internet. We're going in. Thanks a lot. Since in hearing UNESCO, I've been wanting, meaning to ask you this. There's a controversy in Cameroon where a school, a test is being administered today in the areas that didn't have internet for 94 days and the schools were closed. And a lot of people are saying the test, it's basically to destroy the Anglophone education system. People are taking a test at gunpoint. Yeah. And, and many people there said UNESCO said nothing. I don't know whose role it is. Is it Lonsetti Falls? Is there anyone in the UN system that's looking uh, at I'll, I'll what's take a look, taking place I'll take there? a look at the, that report. Okay. Okay, thank you. on Cameroon. Thanks, a lot. Thanks, for, thanks for the statement. Inevitably, there's at least one. I wanted to ask a follow-up. You said that Mr. Lonsani Fall had spoken to all relevant parties, and I wanted to know if this, can, if this included uh, France. And I, say, I ask it just because the permanent representative just now on camera said that he never heard of the issue of the Internet being cut off for 60 well, days. I, I, so, I mean, I know you can't answer that. Yeah, Is there uh, a way, can you ask, a, can, can you, because I don't get answers from the, ask DPA or Mr. Lonsani Falls' office whether they spoke well, to Gilles Thibault. The way, the way, I, the way sure. I read it is that they, he spoke to people in Cameroon. Okay. So I, and did they call for the Internet to be, in fact, turned back on? I mean, it's, it's, it's obviously important that uh, people have access to can I ask you a question? Oh, about French. Are you aware in Cameroon that the, the Anglophone areas haven't had the internet for 60 days? What is. Yes. No, I didn't know. You always know. No, no, this is. I, a, well, <laughs> because the council just recently visited many sure, people, sure. and then the guy called Gilles Thibault, the ambassador, sure. visited Paul Bia and said everything is going fine in those areas. I'm just wondering is it something. The UK says that they're monitoring it at least to see whether it's maybe a threat to international peace and security. Does France have any concern that the internet being turned off is a. Frankly, I would check. I would check to see the, uh, okay, I'll be here. No, no, sure. All right. Thank You're you. Amazing. Gilles Thibault, <laughs> check him out. <laughs> okay. Well, the French ambassador to the UN says he's unaware that Cameroon has no internet in the Anglophone areas for 60 days. This is a classic, and that is Guernica. I 
I wish you all a very warm welcome. We are celebrating our national day. This is the 45th edition. It is the day of unity. The day of the flag. So, when any moment from now I will cut the cake, they will be breaking news. <laughs> but before I cut the cake, we, Cameroonians, united, we first of all have to sing our national anthem. When is King Emmanuel? <laughs> so, we sing the national anthem. <laughs> <laughs> One is, uh, can you confirm uh, that uh, the Secretary General sought to speak with Paul Bia while he was on an extended stay in Geneva, as has been reported? And um, I also, go ahead. No, uh, you will. You no, will, I, won't you? I have no uh, no confirmation of a call having taken place. I mean, I'm not asking if he I, reached I, I know, him. I'm I, asking, I, did he I try nothing, to reach him? I have him? no no information. Okay, on that. and I wanted to know there people there are saying even in the wake of the visit of Lonsani Fall that, for example, a Supreme Court Justice Paul Aya remains was only today, you know, re, re, remanded to remain uh, in prison. So they're not seeing much changes. And I'm wondering, is this something that, that, that uh, Mr. Lonsani Fall looked into while he was there, the continued detention of, of barristers and those who have advocated for uh, fair treatment? Well, of I think if, if, what I just said is, mm -hmm. in fact, that in his contacts with the government, uh, Mr. Lonsani Fall advocated uh, for the release of a number of Anglo, uh, Anglophone leaders uh, and others. So I think that's clear that's one of the things he was advocating for. And all, finally, I wanted to ask you about the, the resident coordinator position. Given that the previous resident coordinator didn't raise any of the issues that you've just mentioned while she was there, 
Is there any progress on naming? I, I don't. I don't know that, and I don't know if you know that. But okay. I, anyway, I, I, next. The people yeah, that are there. Your question? Say, okay. She also blocks okay. the press. That's well, I think she blocks you, but yeah, that's that's her right. In what capacity does she block it? Well, I think uh, anyone who has seen your tweets, I think sometimes they do cross the line, I think, into harassment, and people block you from time to time. Indeed. Champagne, écoutez. Écoutez. Champagne. Comme tu le sais toi-même, si tu es pu au Gabon, on va dire que c'est l'eau de l'Ouest. C'est l'eau de Koumé. Si tu es vu chez les Polonais, à l'époque où ils étaient communistes, on va dire que c'est le vin de la classe ouvrière, mais qui a pris l'habitude de le faire boire par ses représentants. <rire> si tu es vu... Can I ask you a question? Oh. About French... Are you aware in Cameroon that the, the anglophone areas haven't had the internet for 60 days? What is... Yes. You always know... No, no, this is... Well, because the council just recently visited many sure, people, sure. and then the guy called Gilles Thibault, the ambassador, sure. visited Paul Bia and said everything is going fine in those areas. I'm just wondering, is it something, the UK says that they're monitoring it at least to see whether it's maybe a threat to international peace and security. Does France have any concern that the internet being turned off is a... Frankly, I will check. I will check. This is a, okay. A I'll be here. No, no, sure. All right. Thank you're you. Amazing. Gilles Thibault. <laughs> check him out. <laughs> okay. The French ambassador to the UN says he's unaware that Cameroon has no internet in the Anglophone areas for 60 days. This is a classic, and that is Guernica. Là où tu es cultivé, c'est-à-dire en France, on va dire que c'est un vin d'honneur, vin des occasions rares, solennelles, qu'on ne boit. Une fois là, oh champagne. <rire> Toi donc, que nous allons boire pour célébrer la 45e édition de notre fête de l'unité. Toi, qui par la couleur or de ta robe, par ta grande longueur en bouche, densité aromatique en gorge, pas ta grande légèreté en ventre. Oh, champagne. Thanks a lot. Matthew Lee, Inner City Press, on behalf of the Free UN, Coast for Access, thanks for the Thanks for the briefing and the extensive answers. I wanted to ask, um, I would meant to ask you about Libya, but I want, since you mentioned Cameroon, I didn't expect that. Can you describe, like, at, at whose, you said the UN had asked you to go in, what exactly you do in the country? Uh, the, the Italian ambassador had mentioned the internet, and I wanted to know if, if, if in your work in Cameroon you were aware that the internet has been turned off in two regions of the country for more than 70 days, and what you think the UN should do about that. But particularly in Libya, because it's listed on your sheet, what is, what is your work? And do you work, do you work with the, both the UN-recognized government and also there's, there's some areas of the country that are not controlled by that government? Do you do any work there? I'm thinking of Ganfuda, but anything you can say about Libya would be great. And the question for Italy was actually it had to do with that announcement on Friday. Uh, one, if you want to say what you fund of UNMAS in Libya, but what is the agreement between Libya and the tribes in terms of refugee flows? Because... Let's focus on UNMAS and well, there, take that off. This has to do with mines and weapons. Thank you. Ahead, Thank you. I'll, 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 I'll try to cover as much as, uh, as I can uh, in, in, in Matthew's question. Uh, Cameroon, uh, we, we had been aware for some time of uh, the fact that uh, Boko Haram in that region uh, was resorting to IEDs. Uh, it, became, um, it became more obvious to the, the, the local countries like Nigeria and Cameroon, I mean, the, the, the Lake Chad Basin, I would say, uh, in, in the recent past. Um, uh, the uh, UN country team, uh, the humanitarian uh, side of the country team, called on UNMAS to deploy a couple of experts to actually uh, give them an assessment of the situation and, and uh, recommend a few actions. 
So the assessment was clear, there is an issue. Uh, and as much as it is not yet an extensive issue in our view, uh, the perception is there, we need to address the perception, and we need to prepare, protect, prepare the population. For Madame Fioti, buvons! Vivons Champagne! Vivons Champagne! For Madame Fioti, buvons Champagne! This is the United Nations. I'm Matthew Russell Lee and I started covering the UN in 2005. I covered the UN's failings in Sri Lanka, Burundi, Yemen, and UN corruption. That got me thrown out of the UN. In 2016, I sought to cover an event in the UN press briefing room. When I was told that the event was closed or for some journalists but not others, I asked to be shown any piece of paper to that effect and said that if a guard asked me to leave, I would. Finally, a guard told me that the spokesman wanted me to leave, and I did. Three weeks later, without a single conversation or opportunity to be heard, I was handed a letter from the head of the UN Department of Public Information, Christina Gayach, ordering me to leave in two hours. I was still working covering a Security Council meeting on Syria when eight UN security officers pushed me down the escalator, around the traffic circle, and out onto First Avenue, throwing my laptop on the sidewalk. They tore off my UN badge accreditation, and the next day when I came in, I was told that I was banned from UN premises worldwide. Later, they moved five boxes of my files onto the street in front of the UN, and they're trying to give inner-city press's office to a state media that rarely comes in and never asks questions. There's no right to appeal and no definitive process to be reinstated. For 10 months now, every time I want to cover the General Assembly, I have to get a minder who stands next to me as I interview diplomats. This is censorship. The new free UN culture for access believes there must be due process for journalists, a content neutral accreditation system, and appeals rights. Until then, it's just censorship. <laughs> Also in Cameroon, where you said on Thursday that the, the Lonsani fall, I guess I found just a full quote where he said that he, he trusts that the Internet will be uh, gradually or progressively introduced to the rest of the country. I guess I, many people that were left wondering, is it acceptable to only have it be in institutions? What's, his, what's the expectation of the UN in terms of the timing? And also since then, uh, the Catholic uh, uh, clergy have received these, these threats of massive fines. They've, they've distributed on Easter to their congregants, basically for taking part in a nonviolent protest of the treatment of Anglophones. Okay, I, think we, I, I would refer you to, to what Mr. Lonsani Fal said. I echoed what he said. Obviously, we would like to see a return of the Internet as soon as possible, um, and that's the discussions he's been having with the government. Did he attempt to talk to Paul Bia? This is a, because, as you, as you may know, Jeanne Afrique and other publications have said that, that Antonio Guterres sought to, Paul, to speak to Paul Bia and was unable mm -hmm. to. And I'm just wondering. I'm, I'm, not aware of, uh, I'm not aware of the level of uh, whether or not Mr. Uh, Lonsenfal attempted to spoke, speak to Paul Bia. He spoke to the highest authorities he was able to speak to. Um, you're, you're free to contact his office for more details. I'm asking you about the 38th floor. Did anyone on the 38th floor, whether Secretary General yeah, I, or I, Deputy Secretary I, I'm General? I'm not going to go into details of people attempting to call uh, one person or another. In Cameroon. Anyone who has seen your tweets, I think sometimes they do cross the line, I think, into harassment. <laughs> During your trip, in, in, during your trip in Cameroon, there's a there's a there's an issue that's been existing since November of the Anglophone areas, which you have no internet for 52 days. There's been teachers arrested, no schools. So I'm wondering. I was one council member said that it did somehow come up in meetings, but what was the issue raised at all, and and what response was given by the government to this uh, ongoing cut off of the internet and, and abuse in this area? It came up informally in our contacts with members of the government of Cameroon, but as far as I recall, it didn't come up in a formal meeting. And I think that makes sense because we were going there to look at the threat to international peace and security that emanates from Boko Haram and the related issues. Uh, but in private, informal discussion with ministers in the government of Cameroon, it came up and they gave us uh, the, the benefit of their, of their perspective on that issue. Do you think that you know better that you know that it's sent 
two, two visits there. Is, there. is there any Security Council role that can be played in trying to preventively uh, deal with this issue? I don't think it's uh, an issue that's on our agenda uh, per se. Obviously, we keep, a, we keep an eye on our, on, on our radar across the world, uh, but we, uh, we have to make a judgment about whether something is a, is a threat to international peace and security. And at the moment, I think our judgment would be that that issue is an issue which is confined within Cameroon without international uh, aspects. Okay, but we keep that under constant review. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, here we were. That was it. We're going to produce a movie out of this. Quite something. Singing in French. Songs for Paul Bia. Here comes the French ambassador, Mr. Francois Delat. He was there. Here we are. Look at the entrance. I'm not sure what this is all about, but... Unbelievable. You're going to see it. Inner City Press exclusive. I don't know if it's an exclusive, but it's uh, quite something. The Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, the Mina Mohammed, the Secretary, the Chef de Cabinet, Daniel Luisa, Rivero, they were here. The French Ambassador, Monsieur de Lat. By the Secretary General and the Chairman of the EAU Commission, Chairman Mahama. The Secretary General will say a few words, followed by the Chairman, and then we'll take a few questions. Cameron Carol, Internet Carol, cut. Carol, did you push Mr. Secretary General, if I could just indulge you move away from Africa for a moment. The Cameroon sure, Internet sure. cut, uh, the cut of the sure. Internet in Cameroon. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Joseph Klein, can you do something? Great. Thank you very much. The cut of the Internet in Cameroon. Did either organization bring it up? 90 days, the Internet has been cut. Yeah. This is a joke. This, this is a place is a total fraud. The UN has become a corrupt, incompetent, and a censorious organization. They have a spokesperson who threw the press into the street for asking questions about, for seeking to cover a meeting in the briefing room by his friends who took money from the corrupt Chinese businessman, Eng Lap Sang, who's now on trial for UN bribery. Yes, it's true. Please look it up. Please look up the aide memoir, en français, of this spokesperson, who's still allowed to choose questions for, this, for, the, for the Secretary General, making, turning the UN into a laughing stock of incompetence and corruption and censorship. And it must be reversed. The UN is corrupt, and as currently constituted, should have budget, its budget cut to be continued. <laughs> That's not what they say on this side of the table. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, all right. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Are you going to get all the answers to all your Oh, not at all. I still, yeah, at noon I have some more. To, I have some more today. Yeah. Most recently I was asking one of the spokesmen, said, no, no, we're done for the day. And then he did a two-minute Q&A about sex in the city. I, put it, I just put it online. I admire you. Thanks a lot. No, it's fine. I mean, people. There's a lot of journalists that have it a lot tougher. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but that doesn't mean we have to roll over here. You know. You so it's a it's a good balance. Thanks a lot. Randy, question? No, we're done. They remember from Sex in the City. Um, oh, the ambassador of Burundi. He's here. He's in the house. You and staff. Seen it. I think we'll be pulling out very soon. I don't know what the French ambassador oh, he was going to go, but now he's here. There was a chef in a white hat. They served a cake. They had Moet Champon, the South African ambassador. We did a press conference today. We asked him a question about uh, sovereign debt. This is how it is at the Cameroon National Day. Bring back our internet. Free, all arrested. Okay. So now we go. I'm making a movie. I'm making a movie. I know, I know. <laughs> I'm making a movie. But it's good. It's good. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it it's going to be good. It Bring back our internet. <laughs> Free all arrested. <laughs> Those guys work for the UN. Okay, guys. We've done it. The live show. And it was, it was a show. It was the national day or so-called National Day. In fact, it was the day that federalism was unilaterally, unilaterally ended.
by the president just prior to Paul Bia, who's been in power for 34 years. But hopefully when you see the screens, when you see the shots, we can crowdsource who was there and what it all means. This is Manhattan. The ambassador of France was there. I don't think I saw other P5ers. I don't know. All right. We may wind this one up. <clears throat> You've seen it. <clears throat> and there it is. Maybe we'll end, as we often do, with a stand-up. That was the Cameroon National Day. Cameroon National Day with political prisoners locked up in Yaoundé. We'll be producing a film. Inner City Press is on the case. But that is what it was. And to some, the UN is sickening. It was World Press Freedom Day. The UN restricted the press. Hoping it would go away. So more dictators they could bless. Antonio Gutierrez Take off your blinders Take a look at Cameroon Where Paul be a cut the net Don't be like Banky Moon Change your ways before they're set He said no, no, no Restrictions. No, no, no. No more spokesman fictions. Three men spoke at the stakeout, but only two men were shown. When you press center Western Sahara, your free speech credentials were blown. And we said no, no, no. Die. Anders Compass blew the whistle On peacekeepers raping kids in car He got fired for his troubles The UN didn't seem to care that the news would go far And we said no, no, no No more retaliation We said no, no, no Time to pay reparations. He ran by Colorado, Haiti, and slide while it's red. Still hasn't paid a penny, while 10,000 people are dead. And we said, no, no, no. No more lying. We said, no, no, no. 10,000 Haitians dying As the Saudis kept bombing Yemen Sir Ruby put him on a list Ban Ki-moon took him off And from the next list they'll be missed And I said no, no, no No more pay to play Cause I said no, no, no it's more like pay to slay.